the use of hard drugs has been foreign to Ugandans. However, with a fast-rising economy and flourishing middle class, people now have more money to spend. This has not been without consequence, as hardcore drugs have become an item on the shopping lists of many middle-income earners. This is Entebbe, the only international airport in Uganda. Aside from handling passengers and cargo, there has been a marked increase in the number of drug seizures and arrests. The police is not taking any chances. We have uh, mainly two types of uh, hard drugs, that is cocaine and heroin. When it comes by air, the traffickers land it in South Africa, then to Uganda. Uh, the other route of cocaine is from South America to West African countries of Nigeria, of Cameroon, of Benin, of Gabon. Not so long ago, Uganda was only a conduit for drugs in the global drug trade. Uganda is largely the transit route of these hard drugs, though we have witnessed a trend of being a consumer. From July 2014 to July 2015, I should say in a year, we have had uh, 11 cases. Those from West Africa take the whole bigger share of the trafficking business. The highest quantity at least has been three kilograms, yes, and then they go to one and a half, half kilograms of cocaine, of course, generally, cocaine, heroin. But how the tables have turned. I was addicted to cocaine mainly. So when I didn't have it, I would get this thing called Taki. Taki is this situation where you don't have the drug and like your tummy starts aching, you feel dizzy, you feel headache, you get diarrhea, and if it lasts for long, you may even pull out your own hair. <laughs> in 2014, two Ugandan nationals were executed in China for drug trafficking. Many others are languishing in Chinese jails, awaiting trial for drug-related crimes. We are discovering an increase of drug abuse in Uganda. Um, however, uh, the hard drugs are not yet, uh, they, they, on, they have only penetrated the market of the rich and the elite Ugandan class. The ordinary majority Ugandans do not afford to buy the heroin and the, and the cocaine. Addiction as a problem is on the increase the world over. It's not only unique to this country, uh, but what we see that uh, in this country is also uh, it's, it's rising very fast. And uh, among the factors is the uh, one that uh, we have a, a fast increasing population. So that means we are also getting more and more people that are addicted to various uh, forms of drugs. Uh, the other factors are that uh, uh, we have wide drugs that are widely available. Things like marijuana, things like alcohol, tobacco are widely available. So when they are available, people very, very easily uh, access them. Uh, we also have problems that uh, legislation has been very, very weak in this country. Uh, where it exists, the enforcement is sometimes poor, so we get a lot of drugs coming in. But also those, uh, the local available drugs like marijuana, uh, they are growing, their availability, their sale is very, very uh, uh, easy. So it makes people to very, very easily access these substances. The traffickers have been so, so innovative, so, so clever, that they try to capture market from all these sectors. They bring drugs that are the expensive ones that the rich people can afford, and the very, very uh, cheap ones, adulterated, that the, the lower people can afford. So they cater for the entire spectrum of the market. It is this demand for hardcore drugs that saw 20-year-old Aluma lose most of his productive youth years. Cocaine is 7,000 a paper. A gram of cocaine is around 75. I would sell a paper at 7,000. For each paper I sold, they would give me 500 shillings. So in a day, if I sell like 10 papers, I know I have 5,000. Yeah, then brown sugar, that one is 2,500. Depends on the place, some people sell it at 3,000. Mainly in Kisenyi, Kavalagala, in Teve, in Tinda. During my working with the youth, I've come to realize that there is a very, very, very big problem 
about drug and substance abuse. The drugs are real, the substances are real, they are sold everywhere, there is nobody stopping anyone from selling. I began just by selling. The big boys would give me and they would tell me you're going to get a commission. And I was broke at school, I wanted some money. But then there were these people who you would sell to and they would tell you how sure, how sure am I that you're not selling me Johnson powder. You know, Johnson baby powder is also white, same color as cocaine. So they would be like, how sure am I that you're not selling me Johnson? Test it yourself. So I would have tested it myself. And after testing it myself, I would feel that some kind of relaxation. I had this thing that I could control it, that I wouldn't be a drug addict like most of them, but I ended up becoming one of them. Aluma's ordeal reflects the changing dynamics of the illicit drug trade in Uganda, driven by a growing middle class that has developed expensive tests. We have also noted that uh, there is a way how Ugandans have begun to disguise heroin and cocaine in smaller quantities and mix them with other, other products to disguise people. Some of it, even the people take the drugs without knowing they're taking drugs. For example, the shisha smokers. Shisha was the most alarming one, a new one. The girls were saying that is what they love taking. Someone had told girls in a certain school, they told me that, counselor, we must take shisha because when you take shisha as a woman, you become sweet. For me, that was very, very disturbing. Shisha is banned now as we speak, but the government bans, and when people don't know that some things were banned, they keep going to places and drinking back doors. This increased appetite for illegal substances also means Uganda's stature in the illicit drug trade has grown globally, a fact that has prompted government to act when it recently passed the Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Bill. There, there has been a general outcry from parents, from the wider general public about the abuse of drugs, especially by young people and uh, a number of Ugandans who have become addicted to use of these harmful drugs which are not prescribed by the uh, medical field. Uh, secondly, as government, we have also been very, very concerned about the use of our country as being a major drug trafficking center. Trafficking to other destinations, but also coming into the country. And yet, we didn't have a law, a strong law, comprehensive law dealing with this abuse of drugs in our country. The bill seeks to ban the processing, trade, cultivation, and use of illegal substances and plants like marijuana. This hasn't stopped the production, growing, and consumption of illegal drugs in Uganda. Uganda is also meeting the demand for marijuana in other countries like Kenya. In the eastern district of Busia, acres and acres of marijuana welcome you. At the face of it, you only see gardens of cassava and maize, but when you go deeper, you see vast marijuana gardens. Uh, this one is now ready for harvest. So the best way we can uh, do away with it is to burn it after, uh, after putting it. We slash and burn so that these seeds don't regenerate. The police has had to employ the hands of prisoners from a local prison to help with the clearing of these marijuana gardens. The poorest Ugandan borders haven't made it easier for the police. Like this, like this marijuana from here, it goes through Kenya, to Europe, to Asia. Most consumers are from Kenya. And when they come to pick it, they don't use gazetted roots. They always use panniers. And as you know, it is a cross border. It becomes a big challenge on our part of security. But nevertheless, we always try our level best to see that uh, we intercept those who are engaged in the business. At times, we also liars with the Kenyan authorities so that we can have a joint operation, so that we can deter people 
poor is engaged in this business. But as I've, uh, I've already told you, from Majanji up to Malama, it is for us, you know. So it becomes tricky. So gentlemen and ladies, we are here this morning for the exercise we carried out last year, if you can say record, around the same time. Kakati, Yesawa, Gevute, Tanikirewa. Where do we start from? We start from Abba. When we identify a garden, I identify the owner. If the owner is there, a shikwe, eh? a wrist. This chest didn't yield much as the garden owners had crossed to the Kenyan side of the border, except for this lady. We find that even the local leaders are also engaged in the, the business. So it becomes tricky for you, the enforcers, to, to, to fight this vice. Because we find this garden is for the vice chairman, the other one is for the chairman, and those are the people you are supposed to work with. Of course, uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we shall uh, end up finishing all this kind of business. Uganda is now becoming an important producer, consumer, and transit country for illicit drugs in the world. That one is now what is called process now. So those who traffic in, carrying it through our airports, through our borders, those selling it to our young people in universities and schools, please stop, because the law is on the way and will be caught and you suffer the consequences. <laughs>